Here we have another A-level chemistry spectroscopy exam question and it's a level of response from the 2019 paper two exam on the OCRA specification in A-level chemistry. I'm gonna take you through my question annotations and then I'm gonna show you my full layout for this question so you can get as many marks as possible in this level of response question. Okay, I'm going to start by taking you through these two very important pieces of information, the elemental analysis by mass and the mass spectrum. The elemental analysis by mass, very often called the percentage composition by mass, is going to tell me the empirical formula with a little bit of calculation. And then looking at the mass spectrum data here, we haven't got an actual spectrum to look at, but we have got some data here for the molecular ion peak being at a mass to charge ratio of 164. That tells me that the molar mass of my molecule is 164. So now what I need to do is, once I've figured out the empirical formula, I look at the molar mass of the empirical. If it is identical to this value for the molecular ion peak, 164, then the empirical formula and the molecular formula are the same thing. Otherwise, you will notice it should be a direct multiple. And so that means I will likely need to scale up my empirical formula to meet the molecular formula. And then I use that information for the rest of the question. I'll do that full analysis on the next page. But right now, I wanna keep going with these annotations. Here, I'm on my infrared spectrum. And first off, you'll notice I've scribbled out all of this, which is the fingerprint region on the right-hand side. It's 1,500 and downwards. I've not got anything pre-labeled in here for me, and the fingerprint region is not something that you get an opportunity to analyze at A-level without that further labeling. So I'm gonna ignore it and concentrate on all the good stuff over here on the left-hand side. And as you can see from my labels, I've got a very obvious OH carboxylic acid peak here, and I've got a C double bond O. I get asked a lot, how am I meant to be able to tell the difference between a C double bond C and a C double bond O? The C double bond O is a wider triangle shape in this region, and it's really major. It covers a much broader range than the C double bond C, and so they do look very, very different. Can you also please be very mindful that when you are labeling up any OH peaks on infrared spectroscopy, that you certainly say whether it's an alcohol or a carboxylic acid. This one is the carboxylic acid one because it's a very obvious triangle shape. For an example of the alcohol kinds of these, check out the links in the video description. Next up, I've got my hydrogen NMR spectrum, and you'll notice it's in D2O. Now, what that means is, ordinarily, I would take this information about the functional groups on the molecule, and when I go into the hydrogen NMR spectrum, I'm thinking, right, one of these peaks is going to be the OH on my carboxylic acid group. But this D2O means that proton exchange will have taken place. Now, what that means is the OH group on a carboxylic acid will now be an OD. D is deuterium. It's an isotope of hydrogen. And that nuclei of the hydrogen now, now called D, that nuclei of the hydrogen now has an even nucleon number. And therefore, the OH group, now an OD group, doesn't give a peak on the hydrogen NMR spectrum. It's referred to as proton exchange, and it's right at the end of the specification on spectroscopy um, on the OCRA specification, which is module six. So I don't look anywhere in here for the OH group that the infrared spectrum says I should have. That means all of the stuff in here are other features of the molecule, which is incredibly useful actually to be aware of. If you were going into this thinking that you were looking for the OH, obviously that would be quite confusing. So please watch out for that kind of detail. Now, most of the peaks in here are pretty normal, but this one on the left is incredibly important. It's a multiplet that I'm definitely not going to try and say is a uh, quintet or a sextet or a septet or anything like that, because it's a multiplet of an aromatic ring. And the only really useful bit about this is this four. Now, the numbers next to the peaks, so that's the 4, the 1, the 3, and the H just here, they are relative peak areas. Sometimes that's called the integration data. And what it's telling me is how many hydrogens are within that environment. It generally tells me that information. And so that's why you'll notice I've written little H's after all of these. What this 4 tells me here, therefore, then, is this is an aromatic ring with two substitutions on the ring. If you think about regular benzene, regular benzene is C6H6. So if this was the spectrum for benzene, I would expect benzene to have six hydrogens still on the aromatic peak. 
However, here, what we can see is we've got four, which means that there are two hydrogens missing. There's only four left on the aromatic ring, which means they have been substituted for something else. So when I do draw my molecule later on, I'm going to draw an aromatic ring as part of the structure, and I'm going to look for some sort of nod towards it elsewhere on this spectrum. But I'm also going to be mindful that when I draw the aromatic ring, it needs two separate substitutions. I've also got a quartet over here. I've got a singlet and I've got a doublet. Something else I've noticed early on about these peaks on the right hand side, I've got two lots of three H's, which means that these are two separate, different, non-equivalent CH3 environments. And I'm mindful of that when I do my analysis later on. Don't forget to annotate your spectrum as they will consider it on the OCRA specification. It's in the instructions for the examiners. So the instruction of the question here for us says the numbers by the peaks that are relatively precarious, I've been over that, use the results to suggest one possible structure. And I'm telling you now, what that means is there's more than one answer. And when you look at the mark scheme, you'll see exactly what I mean by that. And I'll explain how you can end up with alternative structures as well. You need to show all your, of your reasoning, which means use all the data or you won't get all the marks. And I start off very plainly here, as you can see, I've used this percentage composition by mass data to get the empirical formula of C5H6O. And straight away, we've got a teensy problem with this because the molecular ion peak is 164 and this doesn't add up to 164. Instead, my molecular formula, therefore, ends up being a full multiple of this empirical formula. We just double absolutely anything in here by two and it takes me to the molecular formula of C10H12O2. Now, you might look at that and be a little bit terrified thinking that's a lot of carbons. Remember, six of those are the aromatic ring. So actually, there's only four carbons that you need to mess around with coming up shortly that are actually anything different than that. Furthermore, you already know it's a carboxylic acid. So actually, seven of the carbons have been accounted for. So there's not a great deal left to worry about. Then I do my infrared peak analysis just here. Notice everything is bullet pointed because it allows me to just blurt some facts down straight away. You don't need to be too wordy with this. It's not an essay. This is a chemistry exam. So I've got my infrared peak and I'm quoting the range from the data sheet here for the C double bond O. And then I've got this one as well, which is for the OH acid group. Make sure whenever you say an OH group, as I mentioned before, you say whether it's acid or alcohol. Therefore, I make the conclusion that the unknown compound is a carboxylic acid, and that leads me to my hydrogen NMR analysis. And this is what I do for every peak, unless I'm missing any of this data. I say what the chemical shift value is, so it's clear which peak I'm talking about. I talk about how many hydrogens are within it, using the relative peak area information. I quote the splitting pattern, and then I say what the N value must be. Now, remember the N value here is the number of neighboring hydrogens on the next carbon up. And the splitting pattern comes from the N add one. So the reason it's a doublet is because the N value, the number of neighboring hydrogens on the next carbon up was one. And you can see here, and I do this consistently all the way down, I suggest pieces of the molecule after each peak I analyze in the hydrogen NMR. And you must do this to get all the marks. So here, for instance, it had three hydrogens, so it's a CH3 and it had a doublet pattern, so it's next to a CH. The position of it on the chemical shift scale doesn't tell me anything particularly special about this next environment just here, and I'm not able to say what's further down the line yet, and so I don't worry too much about over-annotating that section. What I also do here is I always circle up the environment that I'm describing with my peak analysis just here. In the mark schemes, they put it in bold, but we can't really write in bold, can we? So I always circle it up in my analysis section. Next up, I've got the peak at 2.3 ppm, three hydrogens. It's a singlet, which means it's all by itself. And the position of it and the knowledge that I've got an aromatic ring tells me this is a CH3 on the ring. Don't worry about the fact I've not shown another group on the ring here. We are doing pieces of the molecule bit by bit. And there's no information in this peak analysis that tells me there's anything else on the ring. That's my other knowledge from looking at the question. Next up. This one, um, it did make me smile a bit because in the mark scheme, it's kind of like, well, is it one or the other? And it's, well, it's actually both. Um, we've got here a hydrogen NMR peak at 2.7 ppm. It's only got one hydrogen, so it's just a little CH. And it's a quartet, 
and a quartet means it's next to a CH3 most of the time. So here you've got two CH options, they're both next to CH3s, however this area of your spectrum has got some overlap, so it could be that the CH is bonded to a C double bond O, which could be the carboxylic acid group, or it could be that this CH is bonded to an aromatic ring, or it could be both simultaneously, because we've got another bond here that's unaccounted for, and actually it ends up being that, and we'll have a look at that when I do the analysis and reveal the molecule in just a moment. Finally here, I've got this final section, which is a further conversation on the multiplet in the aromatic region I was talking about before. Here, the position of the groups on the ring, where we actually place them here, I've gone for these two top corner positions. Um, it doesn't matter where you place them, and this is how you end up with multiple possible suggestions here. If you wanted to find out where these were actually positioned around the ring, you would need the carbon-13 NMR data. And I'll put a link in the video description to one of my tutorials on that to show you how that links up. Finally, therefore, I need to suggest my structure. And I've talked about this in some of the other uh, spectroscopy questions that I've led before on this channel. I would say start off with your functional groups or better yet, start off with some large sections of the molecule you know are mandatory. Remember, you've only got so many carbons to play with. And in this case, we certainly know we've got an aromatic ring. So I would bear in mind that I need two substitutions and I need to make sure that I've got the carboxylic acid group incorporated. Do it in pencil and have a look at what you get. Here, by starting out with my aromatic ring functional group, reminding myself that I need a carboxylic acid, remind, reminding myself that I needed a CH3 on the ring, I end up with this structure and it works. If it didn't work straight away, it's okay. You've drawn lightly in pencil, you rub it out, you have another go. But start with the functional groups. Don't just start randomly with a CH3 and think this is going to work. Start with the functional groups because they are a lot of the talking point of the molecule and it makes a big difference to your pace. As I mentioned before, the different positions of these groups can be anywhere around the ring, and that's how we end up with some different answers. Please check out the full mark scheme for all those alternatives, uh, but this is the one I ended up with, and it was completely okay. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope it has made a difference, but before you go, I do need some help. Please leave this video a like before you go, because it really does help support my channel and let YouTube know I still exist. There's loads of good stuff around the screen now and links to my other video content in the description down below, so make sure you check that out before you head off. Until next time though everybody, happy revising.